This morning he went to get his 3030 rifle out of the pawn shop before he headed home. The clerk at the pawn shop told him that the FBI had put a hold on his gun for five days and that he could not get it out of the pawn shop until then. My nephew wanted to know why his gun was placed on hold, and the clerk told him it was because of his application. On his application, he listed Pentecostal as his religious affiliation. Brandon insisted that he get his rifle back today, so the clerk called the FBI, and my nephew was able to speak to the person that put it on hold. She confirmed that the word Pentecostal triggered them to put, on, put the rifle on hold because our government considers Pentecostalism an extremist religion. Wow, it took Brandon an hour and a half on the phone to finally get a supervisor to release his rifle to him. Brandon is a licensed minister with the Louisiana and Texas Pentecostal Fellowship, of which this gentleman who wrote it as well is a presbyter, and has no record of any crime. He has been preaching since he was 16 years old, grew up in the church I pastor, and has never been in trouble with the law. The only reason this happened is because he is quote-unquote Pentecostal. He has been serving as youth pastor at Calvary Temple Assembly of God Church in Sarah Land, Alabama for the last two years. And when everyone to know this, there is persecution, and he goes on off with one of his little spear. But is persecution coming to America? Now today we can worship in freedom. Today we don't have the governor pounding down our home. We have revival services coming up this week. Are we going to get in and desire to see a move of God now? Are we going to pray for revival now? Are we going to pray that God moves in our country now and turn it back to Him? Or are we going to wait before it's too late? You think you know that it may you know, but how do you know it back in the city? The viewers who get so excited, mm -hmm. they even had cops come in to our church because the people were being too loud. Mm -hmm. and, and people were being called, he was a dynamic preacher, you know. Mm -hmm. And the people, you know, they, they were out of the windows over, you know, and, they, and the people like the other one, the other, you know, they probably called the cops because we were getting too loud. And, uh, God came in and he and see people laying on the floor, you know, everything. <laughs> because of the fire God, you know, he was praying there, and then he would just walk down and the fire God. And I tell you, they, they tried to stop it, but they could not stop it. And even even while he preached, you know, they could not stop him while he was preaching the word. He should have the power of God. And I agree with that. But we need to take charge before it's too late. I mean, if we get as bad as China, yes, they have their own government churches, but they can only preach what the government says they can preach. If they preach anything else, they're in trouble. They'll go to prison. The true church in China now actually meets underground. And they don't meet by telling, oh, next week we're going to meet here or meet there. They can't do that because if someone finds out, they might infiltrate the church and they might all end up losing their lives. So you know what they are, how they meet every week? <coughs> the Holy Ghost has to direct them to the meeting spot. Right. You know, they're glad just to have one page of the Bible that they can memorize and hold chair and cherish. Do we really want to wait that long until something like that comes to America before persecution comes? I mean, what if we do? If God does carry and we do see it. Now we have an opportunity to get on our knees and stop it. Now we have an opportunity to press in, press in and get more of God freely without anybody knocking down our doors and dragging us off and um, possibly taking our lives. I mean, that is the ultimatum. <coughs> you never know what's going to happen. There is no guarantee of tomorrow. But I just want to encourage us. Let's get in before it's too late. Let's pray that God moves in America before it's too late. Because once persecution is here, it's here. Then we have to pray for it to be left. But God always has a time where he purges the true church. And right now we have a chance for God to purge it through revival. And if that doesn't happen, we'll purge it through persecution to the Lord Harry's.
That's always been the way it's been throughout all of history. Heard it through revival, heard it through persecution. Why don't we bow our heads and pray? Grace, gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall do. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you just be with each one of us today. We rebuke every attack of the enemy, Lord, and we pray that you put a hedge of protection around us today and that you put your angels in charge of these grounds, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we just draw closer to you than ever before and desire to see more of you. Have more of you in our life, more of the Holy Ghost, more of the gifts of the Spirit, baptism if we don't have it, Lord. I pray even right now that we prepare our hearts for the message that you have for us today. Anoint the pastor as he brings forth your word. Give him the message you have us to hear. Anoint the song leader and the musicians, Lord, as they lead us to worship, that we may praise you in sincerity and truth, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we'd all be in one mindset and one accord, Lord, that we would not hinder the moving of the Holy Ghost, Lord, but that he could have preeminence and have his way to move up and down these aisles, manifest as he will. I pray, as always, that we just be in one mindset, one accord, Lord, that the church can go forward and grow. That you can move in a mighty way through us and into this community, Lord. That revival would begin before it's too late. We pray even for these upcoming services. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive what you have for us today. And we'll give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and will do in your name.